So what, what is Management Reporter? Well, it's a real-time financial app reporting application and it's designed to empower information workers to quickly and easily create, generate, secure, and publish financial statements. And usually what you'll see folks use it for are those common profit and loss statements, balance sheets, and then sometimes cash flow reports. Just to let you know that Management Reporter does only pull data from the general ledger. So any, any data that comes along with a transaction from one of the uh, other modules, payables, receivables, into the general ledger, you can report on that information. Management Reporter works with uh, Dynamics AX, Dynamics GP, and then also the Finance and Operations ERP. All right, so we're gonna get started here. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is just go over a really quick demo of the basics of Management Reporter so that people learn about the rows, the columns, the trees, some required components and just kind of see how I navigate around in the system. Okay, so when you open Management Reporter, you're gonna be presented with a screen similar to this. It's gonna look and feel a lot like the Dynamics AX and GP application where you're gonna have your navigation pane along the left with the different options you can use in the reports. And then along the top, you're gonna to have your menus and actions. When I make a report, uh, I like to start with the row format first. When you create a report, there are two required components that are need to be in the report definition before it's going to let you save the report. That is a row and a column. So I'm gonna go into a new row format by clicking new. And 90% of the time or higher, in your row format, you're going to be putting in your natural account or something from, um, actually it will be probably most likely your natural account. And that's what I'm gonna do in this case. I'm just gonna make a quick little row with some revenue accounts. So I'm gonna put a description in. And I'm going to use a tool called Edit Insert Rows from Dimensions. It allows you to quickly insert larger chunks of accounts from your chart of accounts. Um, First, I'm gonna start with the account here. So you can see that the ampersand is there. Ampersand means mark for inclusion when you're gonna run this process. And along the left, you'll see my division and department segments. Those have the pound symbol in them. Those mean uh, do not include when you run this process. So I wanna insert all accounts from my 4,000 range up to my 4,999 range, just to get my revenue section into this report. If I wanted to be, make it more of a detailed income statement or detailed revenue set, I could change these to pound symbols by clicking these two options for division and department. And then it's gonna insert every combination of revenue account that I have inside of my ERP. In this case, we're gonna keep it just to our main segment. I'm gonna click okay. And you'll see just like that, all of my revenue accounts come in from my chart of accounts. Uh, it adds the normal balance, so any account that is a normal revenue income equity or liability account will have the C for a normal credit balance. <clears throat> and if you just have to add one or two accounts into a section, you do have the ability to insert them manually. Um, we'll just work with this Germany sales and service here. If I remove that from the line and I want to add that back in, you have the ability to just type in the row what the account number is to get it in. But if you want the description to pop in automatically, you have to go in one level of this link to financial dimension column. So if you double click and then put in 4124 or go all the way in and find the account, as soon as you click OK, now your description is gonna pop in with it. It didn't put my normal balance in. That only happens when you utilize the edit insert rows from dimensions. So I'm gonna put the normal credit balance symbol in there again as well. And I'm just gonna bold my revenue section by hitting Control B on the keyboard. I'm also gonna scroll down to the bottom and I'm gonna create some format lines. So I'm gonna underscore amounts and I'm just gonna say total revenue. And I wanna total up lines 100 all the way down through 1900. And to do that, I'm gonna use a format code called TOT. If I double click in the format code column, click TOT, 
and I'm going to total row codes 100 through 1900. And the reason why I'm going above and below the actual accounts is that, so just in case I add a, an account above 4,100, say 4,000, it's automatically going to be included in my total. The same method works with the bottom here. Anything higher than 4,800 would then automatically be included when I total it. And then I'm going to do a double underscore at the bottom. I'll bold my header section at the bottom as well for total revenue. And then I'm going to remove all of these additional lines underneath because they're not going to be necessary. And as we'll talk about later, one of the tips, if you leave those on the bottom when you print a report, it will potentially add additional pages that are blank when you print it. All right, let's click Save. I'm going to give it a name called Revenue and click OK. So just like that, I have one of my building blocks that are going to be required for a report definition in Management Reporter. The next one is the column layout. I'm going to click on column definitions on the lower left navigation pane, and then I'm going to click New. And just like a report definition, a column layout has two requirements as well before it's going to let you save it. One of the requirements is that you have to pull in a description. This is going to pull in any description that you have listed inside of the row format we just created. So your revenue header section, the total revenue on the bottom, and then your account names. The other requirement is a financial dimension column. This is the column that's going to pull data within the report. We're going to add two of them in this. I'm going to have one for periodic and one for year to date. The periodic section column is going to pull net change information for the month that we run it. And then, of course, the year to date is going to be all year to date information. So if I run it for March, it's going to grab all data up to March. And if it's a balance sheet, it will include beginning balance information on the year to date column. I'm going to insert some auto text headers so that it will dynamically grab the name of the month. So I can double click, choose insert auto text, and I'm going to use the month name and click OK. And over here, I'm going to type in, just type in year to date. And I'm going to type in, or actually, I'm going to use auto text on the top column again. And I'm going to use the fiscal year. And I'm going to change it from being underlined to not being underlined on that one. All right, I'm going to save my column. And when I save my column layout, I like to give it a name that tells me what, what the column is set up like. So in this case, I'm going to just do PER underscore YTD, indicating that it's a periodic and year-to-date column inside of the report. All right, I click OK. There I now have my two building blocks required to, cre to create a report definition. Close that. In the lower in the upper left now I'm gonna if you can see it there's a little drop down arrow right beside the new button it's going to give you an option for all of the different items that you can create new uh, in this case we want report definition I'm going to click OK on that message and now I'm going to assign the row that we just created called revenue and the column that we just created called PER underscore YTD. Now I'm using the Fabricam demo data and I know that inside of that database, I have some good information in April of 2017. I'm gonna click down the detail level and I'm gonna let it grab financial and account information. I'm gonna run it for my Fabricam company and it's going to grab posted activity only. Click Save, and I'm just going to call it a revenue report. And I'll click OK. I'm also going to go over to the Settings tab, and I'm going to unmark this checkbox. Because if a row doesn't have any data, I just want it to not show up in my report. Make it look a little more streamlined and a little less busy. I'll click Save again, and then I'm going to generate that. So what it does now is it uh, sends a response out to the management reporter process server and says, I want this report, this data um, for this date. When you're done processing it, send it on back and open it up on my screen. And 
All right, so it opened up on the screen and you can see here's my the revenue report we just quickly made. Not too many accounts with revenue in them, but as you can see, it looks nice. I don't have a lot of blank information. Um, and just, just like that, we created a really quick report, uh, an easy row, an easy column, and then those two requirements which are needed for creating a report definition. I'm gonna go one step further and I'm gonna show you the power of the reporting tree. Um, a reporting tree just adds a, an, an additional level of breakdown into your report utilizing your account framework. In my case, I've got a division in the beginning of my account framework and a department that I can utilize. If I hit new reporting tree, here's my blank slate, but over on the right here, if I double click in there, you'll see my division, my account and department. I've already utilized account in my row format, so I don't need to break it apart anymore by that. I'm gonna use my de department um, segment in order to break it apart into some different additional layouts. Inside of the tree, you also have the option to insert units automatically. Uh, one thing that I just wanna point out is you'll notice that I can't see my account category, but I wanna turn that off. If I scroll down on the right, I can uncheck account category, I can uncheck division, and now I'm just gonna allow it to create every comp, every division, or sorry, every department that I have inside of my account setup. I click okay. And it automatically inserts all of my departments. In GP, you can't post to uh, a segment that doesn't have a department. So I'm gonna get rid of that. If you're using Dynamics AX or Finance and Operations, you'd be able to have a blank department. In this case, I'm gonna just copy over my unit names over to my unit description. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna call it a department. Click okay again there. Close my tree by clicking the lower level X. I'm gonna click my tree, save the report, and I'm gonna hit generate. When I hit generate, I'm given the option to choose which departments that I wanna run the report for. I would have the ability to pick and choose uh, any combination in here. In this case, I wanna run them all and click okay. Same process, it's gonna run, go out to the server, do the request for the report, and then when it's finished, it will pop it back up onto my screen. All right, so the same values, you're gonna see the same look and feel at the summary level on the top, but then if I go down to the reporting tree in the lower left, I can go and pick any of my departments that have data within them. Department 0, 0, 0, 001 and 0, 02 have data. I'm just gonna show a breakdown if I click 00. zero. There's the revenue layout for department 00, zero, zero and the same with 01. 